Hi, my name is Mary Glassman, Simsbury's first selectman, and welcome to Simsbury Happenings. There's a lot happening at Simsbury as we uh, head into the spring, hopefully, weather. Um, all our focus will be on budgets, budgets, budgets. And I'm honored today to be uh, joined by Selectman Lisa Havner. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Mary. This is your fifth budget that season you'll be going into, so I'll uh, we'll be anxious to hear your thoughts on this upcoming budget season. And uh, Linda Schofield, new to the Board of Finance. Congratulations, Linda. Thank you. It's wonderful that you have uh, offered all your experience at the state capitol and all your experience as a consultant, a professional, um, to the Board of Finance. It's uh, wonderful to have you join the Board of Finance, and we're looking well, forward to working with you. It's good to be here with a couple of veteran budget people. Yeah, <laughs> we, uh, we have a lot to talk about in a short period of time. And so uh, I think the first thing we'll talk about is how important uh, the public participation in the budget process is. So we want to uh, have you write down that budget season has begun and get on uh, Simsbury website, www.simsbury-ct.gov, and start to write down the budget workshops. But um, Lisa, why don't you talk about a little bit about um, how important the role of the public is in um, getting as much input as possible before we uh, send the budgets to referendum in May. Well, one of the things you know, when we run for election, we door knock, and we door knock over a thousand homes, sometimes up to two thousand. And the one thing we hear over and over again is that taxes are too high. And one of the things we can do to control taxes is conservative budgeting. And as you know, working with you, we've had some of the most conservative budgets in the town's history. And um, but the reason why we need public participation is it's great to hear from you when we door knock, but we also need the public to help us prioritize because mm -hmm. when we set our budgets, we look at must spends, things we have to spend, should spends, and then want to spends. But of course, how you prioritize or what goes into what category differs for different people, and that's why it's so important we hear from the public what their priorities are. And can I interject too? I, yeah. I, I also know that we have a really low voter turnout when it comes time to vote on budgets. And that's that's disappointing, but yes. it's so important that people get out and vote on these budgets because we hear that they want us um, to keep their taxes low. And this is particularly a concern for seniors, but also for families mm -hmm. struggling to pay college bills, trying to meet their mortgages, um, and their property taxes are a significant uh, portion of the total mm -hmm. tax bite that they feel every year. Um, and so they tell us that, but then they don't go out and vote on the budgets. And so the people who want something in the budget are the only people who go out and vote, and it, it kind of skews the results. Um, but what was our voter turnout last time on the budget? Like 6% or something? 7.4%. 7. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that means, you know, over 90% of the population <laughs> Is, is not angry that their taxes are up, but they're not voting. <laughs> well, that's important, Linda, because we're taping the show in February, and the referendum will be in May, and so we want to encourage people to vote in May at the referendum, but also there's a lot of opportunities between now and May to, to, express, in, yourself. to express yourself and get involved. Yeah. Um, let's just hit uh, right the, t the hot topic, and that is uh, what we hear is that taxes in Sims very too high compared to other towns. So let's just talk about that for a second. Um, on the Board of Selectmen side, um, the, t the side that the Board of Selectmen, at Lisa and I, as, uh, and I as first selectmen, have control over is about one quarter of the overall town budget. So um, Less. Less. <laughs> and you have factor in debt service and everything. And I know on the town side, uh, we have kept the uh, tax, uh, taxes of town services the same or lower than we have over the last six years. Basically frozen the town budget over the last six years. So if that's the case, then why, you know, the public will say, well, why have our taxes kept, kept going up? Well, there are, there are many things that go into your, your taxes. Obviously, the biggest drivers are the budgets, the Board of Selectmen. So for every dollar you send to the town, 25 cents goes to the Board of Selectmen. The majority goes to the Board of Ed, mm -hmm. and some goes to the fire district, and some goes to non-public schools, and the, the rest goes to debt retirement. Mm -hmm. So there are many different factors, but the other things, so those are what we spend. But and, and actually, don't we have a handy little pie chart on that? We that do. We, do. we can we flash do. up there while you're talking. <laughs> yeah, that's great. We do have a lot. Uh, but the other thing, it's some of the policy decisions we make also affect your taxes. Like the Board of Finance in the past assumes that our co tax collection rate is going to be much is going to be lower than what it actually is and what it has been traditionally. So if you assume you're going to get less in, in the budget, you raise the taxes to cover what you think 
So that's the shortfall. A, that's a good point. So if we um, do refer to the recent Board of Selectmen history, if you look at the, uh, the chart, you'll see that um, Simsbury has had the lowest taxes on the town services uh, portion over the last six years, and it has basically in the history of our town. But Linda, that's, that's um, what's, what's really exciting is your role as a Board of Finance member is that the mill rate is not set based on just the town right. services. So right. maybe you could talk a little bit about what you see as your role as a Board of Finance member in setting the tax rate, the mill right. rate, right. Um, for the overall budget. Because people, again, may not understand that the first selectman doesn't set the taxes. Right. The first selectman only has control and the Board of Selectmen over yeah, 20, 23.4%. Less than 25% like of yeah. the budget. So that's where the Board of Finance role is so important, right. and people may not know how powerful that board mm -hmm. really is. Yeah, so, what right. are your thoughts on Well, that? I'm learning, obviously, <laughs> being a new person on the Board of Finance, I'm, I'm learning a lot, reading tons of information. And actually, there is lots of great material out there that the town produces mm -hmm. about the various budgets and our you know, revenue sources and, and the like. Um, I, I want to go back to an earlier point you made about Simsbury's mill rate. Our current mill rate is 38.51 in total. And when you compare that to the towns we sort of, I think, of compete against, I know people don't typically think of towns competing, but we are competing. We're competing mm -hmm. for residents, we're competing for businesses. Right. Um, and when you look at who we compete against, you know, it's Avon, Canton, Farmington, you know, our neighbors, West Hartford, towns that are like us in, in terms of being, you know, size and composition mm -hmm. and high priority on good education, those kinds of things. Um, Simsbury at 38 and a half um, mill rates compared to Avon, 26.3, our school systems are neck and neck, mm -hmm. you know, when you compare capped scores, um, we're really barely apart. Um, but our taxes are significantly apart. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what you hear from realtors, what I hear from realtors, is that they're having a harder and harder time selling houses in Simsbury because people know they can get an equally good education elsewhere mm -hmm. um, at a much lower uh, mill rate. And, and that's a significant consideration when you're looking at buying a three or $400,000 or $500,000 house. Um, you know, that translates into you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a year in taxes, and mm -hmm. so, yeah, um, those are big concerns for us on the uh, on the board of finances. How do we figure out how to um, let those other towns catch up exactly. <laughs> in their mill rates and try to hold our our budget still? But of course, as you've pointed out, um, you're you're less than a quarter of the budget, so we do have to look at the board of education, which is very difficult because we all prioritize, you know, wanting our children to have a good education, but it's it's time for us to look hard at that budget. Um, there's actually been, um, since 2005, a 13.7% decrease in student enrollment. Um, and over that same period of time, the budget has continued to go up. Um, so it's time for us to look at, you know, how do we translate some of that decline of 633 students into some savings. Um, and I know the Board of Education is struggling with that right now. And so unfortunately the role of the Board of Finance to some degree is to incentivize them <laughs> or help them um, to, to look you know, more carefully as many of us have had to do in, in business environments and in other branches of government. Um, you know, how, do, how do we economize and still get good quality education? So the challenge is can we freeze ta our taxes um, while still maintaining the quality of services. As, as a first selectman, I've presented budgets that have been uh, the lowest in the history of our town over right. the last six years. And um, it's frustrating because that doesn't result in lowering the mill rate. Right. So people, right. uh, you know, see yeah. that, that um, you know, their taxes going up, but the, the level of services may be right. maintained the same. So, um, you know, is there can we can we realistically accomplish that goal? That would be my goal this coming fiscal year. I know that uh, that is is a goal that yeah. I think we all share is to really hold the line on taxes and yet preserve the quality of both the town services and education. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, are there some other factors that will contribute to us doing this? Yes, and there is one that we're happy to report on, and that is that we are seeing for the first time a little bit of grand loan list growth, and that means there's more development and more taxable properties. We had got into the budget season thinking it was going to be only a 0.25% increase, and I, would you like to share the news? 
Yeah, so uh, it's wonderful that the green list has gone up on about 0.6%, which is uh, more growth than we've had in, in recent history. Um, and uh, I think that's, a, thank you, Lisa, for pointing that out because we, we focus on the expenditure side of the budgets, but there's a whole revenue piece yep, as exactly well. Right. And, um, you know, given the economy, um, I think that it's a credit uh, to the town and to our efforts that uh, we have been able to bring a lot of new economic development in. And uh, Lisa, I don't know if you want to talk about a little bit about some of the exciting marketing opportunities and things that we've put in place, but I think it has absolutely had an effect on, uh, on the grand list. Well, uh, thanks, Mary. I mean, one of the things we're very proud of, we, we, as I think we're known as being budget hawks because our budgets have been so conservative, but the thing that is less known is what we're doing to grow the grand list. And I, I just want to start out pointing out a difference. People always say our commercial base is too low. We actually have a bigger commercial base than Avon. Yes, yeah. So that's sort of an, that that's an interesting too. statistic. I think we have a graph on that, too, I don't we? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Comparing us to other towns. <laughs> but going from there, we are actually taking a lot of affirmative steps. As a town, you can't make bank loans to businesses. You can't be the person who puts the shovel in the ground for the businesses. But there are things we can do, and I think it's important that we let the public know what we are doing because we've done a lot. Um, one of the things we've done is we've worked to streamline approvals for town project or for business projects that come to the town. We've done that through Fort Mace Code, through the PAD. And that makes it easier for businesses exactly. to come. And that's on planning and zoning. That's on yeah. planning and zoning. But it's supported by the Board sure. of Selectmen Absolutely. through the charrette process. And I think we that's important, that. Lisa. A lot of people don't know, but our reputation of being a business-friendly town, being proactive, um, is certainly well-known to the developer community and the and, business community. And that's a big change. It didn't used to be it that way. It is a big <laughs> change. And it's taken us a long time yeah. to do that. You know, we've noticed a significant increase over the last few years. Yep. And that's all an attitude and, and leadership. So. And, and another thing that we initiated just last year was a marketing study where we did an analysis of what kind of businesses will thrive in Simsbury and now so if you're a business you don't need to guess will right. I do well here we've actually done the research for you and mm -hmm. that's at simsburystrategy.com you can look at that one of the the best ways to grow your tax base is to make sure you retain and nurture the current businesses mm -hmm. and to that end Mary you started um, the business resource center at the library it's now an award-winning statewide and national award-winning center um, that supports our local businesses and people looking for jobs. Uh, the other thing we do is we fund Main Street mm -hmm. and their job is to, I should say partially fund, right. is to support our local businesses exactly. and to do national and state branding for us, so we do that. And we've done, the other thing we can do, while towns can't do a lot, one thing we can do is infrastructure improvements to make our town an attractive place. And Linda, I know you you were you a big supporter, Mary, on trails and bike paths because that supports ecotourism and the businesses that grow up around that. Yeah. And what we've done at Simsbury Farms with the pool, the rink, we make it a desirable place for families to want to come. Yeah, and I'll just add to that that you know, in, in talking with a number of realtors in my new role as finance director, because realtors are, the, are sort of the front line of knowing why people choose exactly. a town and why they don't. Um, and one of the reasons people choose to come to Simsbury is because of the great recreational facilities here in town. Um, and, and I thought that was pretty interesting. It's actually why I chose to come here as well, so I was glad to know I wasn't alone. <laughs> it's why we did as well. Our realtor showed us Simsbury Farms and we were sold. Yeah. And, we're sold. And, yeah. and Linda, I just put a plug in for your uh, triathlon that you uh, oh, are spearheading in uh, May, and I think it's May 18th. May 18th. And actually, uh, we're going to do a SCTV show okay. on it too. And folks, film it next a, week. Uh, run. Bike Run, bike, and, and paddle. Kayak, paddle. Yeah. So yeah. congratulations. Yeah. I think all of these efforts and partnering is a really key uh, word for us, partnering with our business community, partnering mm -hmm. with our volunteers, partnering with uh, other groups of volunteers like uh, the Terrafield Village Association, Simsbury Main Street. Mm -hmm. It really makes us a very attractive right. place to live. Right. Uh, I wanted to get back to uh, the challenges of setting the budget. And I, I, I just wanted to thank you, Linda, for having brought to the Board of Finance uh, conversations that the town hasn't had previously. Um, and I was hoping that you could talk a little bit about the collection rate and how mm -hmm. that's determined by the Board of Finance and uh, the reserves and the um, issuing of debt. Um, one of the criticisms that I've heard of uh, around from our residents is that we overtax. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we do a good job holding our budgets uh, firm and certainly on the Board of Selectmen um, holding you know, the lowest budgets in the history of the town. But we've almost gotten too conservative and we've overtaxed our residents to the point where um, 
you know, maybe it's time to really look at those, those um, issues, and, and you have really raised those issues at the Board of Finance level, which is very refreshing, something that we don't have control over and on the Board of Selectmen. So maybe you could explain a little bit how sure. those um, factors contribute to yeah. setting the tax yeah. rate. Well, and let me just say <laughs> also, really, everyone at the Board of Finance has raised these issues. Mm -hmm. It's not just me. Um, and I'm glad to see that. There are, uh, yes. it's, it's fun to be on that board because it's a nice group of people for me to work with. And you know, we're, I think we're all kind of on the same page of yes. really wanting to keep taxes um, low or at zero <laughs> as ter in terms of an increase. Um, but yeah, the, as uh, Lisa was describing earlier, you know, if, you, if you need to collect $100, you can tax $100. But if you assume that only 98% of the people are going to pay their $1 each in taxes, you're only going to get, you think you're only going to get $98, then to produce $100, you're going to have to tax more than $100 um, in order to collect at that 98%. Right. Well, the reality is we assume we're only going to collect 98%, but in fact, for as long as the records show that I've looked at, we've collected well in excess of 99, 99.5, 99.8% mm -hmm. to 100% of the taxes. So we end up collecting more in taxes than we need to in order to meet the budget. And that's been somewhat intentional in the past to try to create a surplus that could then be put into reserves, a kind of mm -hmm. rainy day fund. And that's not a bad thing to do because when we had not a rainy day, but a snowy day a couple right. of years ago, it was a good thing we had some extra money laying around that we could use to help you know, cut all the trees that fell down. Right. Um, but we nowhere near came close to using everything that was in that, um, in that fund. Right. And that fund is now, I think, close to 13% yes. of the budget. Um, one of the things that does for us is help us get a good AAA bond rating. But there's a question in, in I think, all of our minds what is the appropriate amount of reserves to retain, particularly since towns are constrained by state laws as to where we can invest those reserves. Right. And they're so restrictive um, to, to make sure that we don't uh, invest in poorly performing things that we are investing in things that give us a quarter of a percent return mm. a year. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but you know, if you read the papers, people were getting 25 and 30% yeah. returns this last year. Of course, they took a bath some years earlier, and so the town invests in things that avoid those ups and downs, exactly. but a quarter of a percent is terrible. So we need to take a look at, are there any other ways we can invest that money? And if we can't, in my mind, it's really unfair to taxpayers to take their money and essentially put it under the mattress when they could keep their money and be getting a return on it. Right. And if we need it later, we can tax it from them later right. if we have an emergency. Right. That, um, so I, I think we have to sort of balance those. And I'm not sure what the right balance is, but we need to have the discussion. But one, one important think. thing I just want to point out is, you know, our budget increase was, I think, 190000 last year. And the reserve, the over tax on the reserve is close to $900,000. And what's right. sort of interesting about that is the people in Sinsbury have an opportunity to vote on our increase, but the intentional over collect or underestimating the taxes doesn't show up in our budget. It doesn't show up in the Board of Selectmen budget. It's mm -hmm. not really accounted for other than at the meeting where they say, so there isn't, and there's not a public audience there to discuss it. So it's sort of an odd well, it's an interesting tool that the Board of Finance has, but it's one that's not fully understood right. and one that right. the public doesn't really have an opportunity to participate in as they do with some of the other budgeting well, I think, processes. Well, I think that's an important point, Lisa, because I think if you look at the Board of Selectmen history, and we have uh, some a slide to show on that, you'll say, well, well, if the Board of Selectmen budget has gone down or stayed relatively flat, why are taxes going up? And I think we've talked because a little bit about... Because debt service has also remained flat. Well, that's so... so when fight, people. Yeah. So when people look at, they should look at both the Board of Select and Board of Ed budget, but also what the Board of uh, Finance sets as a collection mm -hmm. rate. And Absolutely. Lisa, uh, Linda, you're just going to start to talk about the, um, the debt that the town issues. So how does that factor into um, how we collect taxes? So maybe you could speak to that. Well, debt service, I think, is about 7% of the budget. Um, and that's you know, basically the, the town's mortgage, just <laughs> like anybody has on their home. 
um, we have to pay for what we've borrowed for for major capital expenses for things like school building schools, building town buildings, um, uh, those sorts of things. You know, major capital expenditures. So obviously, keeping keeping a lid on how much we uh, borrow in the first place is important, and we do right. have a guideline about you know seven percent, uh, not borrowing more than seven percent of the budget. Right. Um, Which we've met. Right. Uh -huh. So yeah. we're, we're in a very conservative. But as place. you've pointed out too, many times there is also a question of how long, you know, when you take a mortgage out, do you take out a five-year mortgage or a 30-year mortgage, right. you know, or something in between? And that's also a discussion that, you know, I think there are mixed feelings about. Um, and you really could have a different time period for different projects. If you've got a project that you know is going to last you 50 years before it needs to be replaced, you can maybe stretch out those payments over a longer period if you've got, um, but of course that does result in a total larger payment. So right. you kind of have to balance, you know, do you want to pay? Time that's over time. That's over time. Nearly right. yeah. the taxes. Or you can try to pay it all in year one, <laughs> which is right. going to give you a, an enormous um, right. a bite in, in that very first year. but but leave you without debt. So, I mean, there's, again, it's a balancing act of it what's is. a reasonable It is, and time again, period. I think that's an important conversation to have. Yeah. Just uh, as Lisa pointed out earlier, that is not something that goes to the voters. That's something right. that the Board of Finance yep. decides, how yep. many years do you issue debt? And I think it'd be interesting to hear from our residents, um, if we uh, purchase open spaces, we just did, and we'll be going back uh, to the voters to uh, recommend the final phase of the Ethel Walker purchase, which will complete the transaction of mm -hmm. uh, more than 400 acres of open space. The question for the Board of Finance, which recommends it uh, as part of the budget, is um, do, we, do we pay for that over 10 years, or do we pay for that over 20 years, or do you pay for it over 30 years? Um, I think the positive, the pros of pay, you know, the, the advantages of paying it over 10 years is certainly um, you know, it's a shorter period of time and it's and, and less uh, total less cost, interest to pay. Interest. Yeah. Uh, but during this economy, when the borrowing costs are so low, yeah. um, is it more fair to spread out open space over 20 years, let's say? Mm -hmm. um, because that open space will be enjoyed not just by right. the people who are living in Simsbury for the next 10 years, but will be enjoyed for future generations. Mm -hmm. So is it more fair uh, to spread it out so that we're not um, right. increasing? the taxes for mm -hmm. this 10-year period mm -hmm. uh, that you're paying for the open space, or is it more fair to spread it out? And mm -hmm. I think that's the important conversation yeah. to have. And it's different than a conversation you might have about your own personal finances. Mm -hmm. Like you might, if you buy a house, say, yes, I want to pay the higher mortgage rate per month and pay it off in 15 years because that's me and it's only me. Right. But for our, when you're looking at it at the town level, you're looking at people who come and go to town, and should those who are here for only 10 years bear the burden of something that's going to be enjoyed for 30 years? Because yes, over time, the town will pay more for a mortgage, but on your year-to-year -year payments, and that's what I'm hearing most people say, obviously, if you do a 30-year mortgage, you pay less month to month, and that's the same with town bond right. bonding, if right. you bond. So when people are struggling day-to-day -day because they're seeing job loss or reduction in salary, they're concerned about meeting their budgets on a month-to-month -month basis. And mm -hmm. the way we can help alleviate that is by, one way, is by bonding yeah. over a longer mm -hmm. period for if, some projects. Yeah, people do have a, you know mixed feelings right. about not wanting to saddle their children with Absolutely. future debt, and I relate to that a lot. Well, it's a balance. We're not, talking about, we're not talking about yeah. crazy. It's maybe right. going from 10 to 15 year on some projects right. that yes. will right. benefit the town for 50 to 100 years. Well, I guess just to summarize, so if we summarize, I think um, our wish lists are uh, this year, uh, making sure the public gets involved, so please get involved. Plenty of opportunities to come to the Board of Select meetings, the Board of Finance meetings, there'll be a Board of Finance public hearing. Uh, two, uh, while you're looking at the expenditure side, uh, the town budgets and the education budgets, please also look at the revenue side. And uh, thank you, uh, Linda, for involving the Board of Selectmen in the conversations uh, that sure. we haven't had previously, um, and taking a look at uh, what's fair for our taxpayers. Um, so any other final thoughts on the budgets as uh, we move into budget season, Lisa and Linda? I guess there are two things we always look at. One, don't spend more than you have, but right. the other side of that is you get what you pay for. And so there is a value consideration. We do pay higher taxes, but it is a lovely place to live and we pay for that and we are proud to live in such a beautiful place. So thank you. And Linda? I, I would echo that. I, I love living here and it's, it's worth it to me, but uh, I, I do want to make sure that we 
you know, make it accessible and affordable for people to stay and for other people to, uh, to right. move in and that we can compete with our neighboring towns uh, toe Absolutely. to toe. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your service and uh, thank, we look forward to uh, working together on the budgets going yeah. forward. And uh, thank you for joining us at Simsbury Happenings and please get involved. It's your town. It's your budget. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.